Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon is a game I've beaten using pretty much exclusively the worst units in the game, it's a game I've beaten using only one unit, it's a game I've speed ran, it's a game I've done a draft race for, it's a game I've successfully completed an Iron Man of on the hardest difficulty, and it's a game that's very near and dear to my heart. It's also a game that's very divisive in the community due to its different graphical style, lack of supports, and seemingly unimpressive story, and overall it just seems to be perceived as one of the lesser games in the series. However, as longtime viewers of my channel should know by now, my tastes can be a bit atypical compared to those of the usual Fire Emblem fan. So today, I'm going to tell you why Shadow Dragon is actually a really great game. Of course, before we get into it, remember to like and subscribe if you end up enjoying the video, and maybe leave a comment if you have your own thoughts. With all that being said, let's begin. The game starts off incredibly strong with something I like to call good game design. You see, the console it's on has two whole screens, which the game makes very good use of right off the bat. During the prologue missions, the game places tutorial text on the top screen, while the gameplay takes place on the bottom screen. This means that unlike other RPGs, there aren't constant pop-ups at the beginning that constantly interrupt the game, which means you can actually play the game and absorb the information by reading the tutorials, or through experience if you choose not to read them, meaning that several types of players can get into the game right away. This also sets the trend of Shadow Dragon's design leaning into fast-paced and well-designed experiences. This trend continues even after the tutorial is done, since the game continues to use the top screen well by displaying stat information on it meaning that the player has all the information they immediately need after just a quick scroll. Unlike previous Fire Emblem games where you'd have to slowly kind of scroll through separate menus, and surprisingly other DS RPGs don't even take advantage of this feature, meaning, overall, the actual intended user experience in Shadow Dragon is very well designed. Now, where did I get my sources on what makes a good user experience? Well, a while ago a dev from a game you might have heard of, gave a very interesting GDC talk about what makes a good user experience, and Shadow Dragon actually checks most of the boxes, which means, scientifically, Shadow Dragon is a very good game, and if you disagree, you're nitpicking and biased. I win, bye bye. <laughs> While we're on the topic of game design BS nobody cares about, let's talk about UI. Personally, I think Shadow Dragon has a very good UI. The menus are all clear and concise, the feature you want to access is never more than two button presses away, and the sound effects for the UI are very nice. I mean, damn, just listen to these bleeps and bloops. You just don't get bleeps and blues like these anymore, folks. Now, you're probably thinking, damn, is this guy really talking about menus in his video about a DS game from 2008? But believe me, this is a very important business, because according to the devs of Halo Infinite, their trash UI prevented them from adding game modes that had been in the series for like 20 years. So yeah, this is very important business indeed. But that's enough of that, let's get back to Fire Emblem. If you think about it, a lot of Fire Emblem UI is kind of terrible. Like, in three houses I have to navigate to sections that I don't mean to, and there are like a million different sub-menus, and it's in the shape of a weird, hard-to-navigate circle for some reason. It's not just three houses, though. For example, the battle preps in Thracia make me want to stick a revolver in my mouth. And, like, this next thing is pretty petty, but in Fire Emblem 6, all you had to do to change the position of a unit was to exit out to the map and just select the unit. But for some reason in Fire Emblem 7, they made it so there's extra button presses involved to go to a formation option and then move the unit, and it's just like, why did they even add this extra step? Like, I always try to move units, and I can't in Fire Emblem 7, because I play FE6 more than 7, so I forget to go to formation, and then it just reminds me how annoying it is that they added that for no reason, and I just hate it so much, and ugh. So we've established that Shadow Dragon has an incredibly well-crafted UI and UX, however that doesn't mean jack squat if your game mechanics and level design are trash. So how about those mechanics? Well, compared to other Fire Emblem games, Shadow Dragon is very simple, lacking things like skills or varied map objectives, this makes sense as it's a remake of the original NES game, but that doesn't mean it doesn't bring anything new to the table. Shadow Dragon was the first game to have reclassing, meaning everyone can live out their dreams of making Caesar a Dark Mage. However, the mechanic is much simpler than in its later incarnations, since you only need to select any class in their set and boom, that's it. No marrying, to unlock new classes, no exams, no nothing. However, it does limit how many units you can have in a certain class. Gee, I wonder if another Fire Emblem game in the franchise should have had that. Oh, gee whiz, oh, gee willikers. Now, while I don't enjoy the mechanic as much as I do in Fates, since it lacks Fates' depth, I do think it plays into the game's main strength that I brought up in the UI and UX sections, its speed. I think the lack of other series mechanics also play into this strength as well. 
Shadow Dragon is a game you can just pick up and play without needing to worry about any extra things, and while I do enjoy the extra things in the other games, they don't detract from the appeal of Shadow Dragon. Yes, I love planning out Fates runs where I make Perry an uber-powered abomination, but I also enjoy just being able to pick up and play a game and have simple fun. One doesn't inherently need to detract from the other. The thing is, though, Shadow Dragon strikes an amazing balance between simple and engaging. Like, I've described the mechanics as simple, but you still need to use strategy to overcome the challenges. I mean, it's still a Fire Emblem game after all. But the added depth that is there makes the game immensely replayable. Do you want to do an Iron Man where your classes are randomized every chapter? Go for it. Want to beat the game using only our Lord and Savior? Go for it. Want to defeat the final boss using Dark Mage Massalon? You bet you can do that. Want to kill off all the actual characters so you can use the borderline useless replacements? Well, you probably shouldn't do that, but you can. The game also adds about two save points per map, which means that if your favorite unit does end up biting the dust, you could just quickly resume. A much better compromise than the turn wheel, in my opinion. All of these simple, yet engaging mechanics, combined with the overall speed of the game, make for, in my opinion, the most replayable Fire Emblem game. I mean, just look at my clear times in Shadow Dragon. They're all about 10-12 to 12 hours, compared to my near 30 hour Fates clear times. Again, I'm not knocking Fates here, I'm just saying Shadow Dragon's excellent speed from the good UI and UX combined with the simple yet engaging mechanics give it a very unique strength that doesn't get the credit it deserves. So we've established that the mechanics are good, but what about the level design? I won't dwell too long on this subject since I made a 45 minute video discussing Shadow Dragon's map design, but to summarize my thoughts, despite the maps coming from the first Fire Emblem, a lot of them are very engaging, but they don't really reach the heights of the franchise. On the other hand, despite having some poor maps, none of them make me want to die. So overall, pretty good. So now that we've established what makes a good game, you know, a game, let's discuss the story. To summarize it, Prince Marth must travel the land to collect two magic rocks so he can get a thing to kill a guy to get another thing and slay a dragon. So you know, a JRPG story. It is well written and it does have some cool lines, but that doesn't really change the fact that it's the generic JRPG story. But here's the thing, that's not really the story you're supposed to experience. To understand what I mean, let's look at a quote from series creator Shozo Kaga. It's not a big problem if some of your characters die in Fire Emblem. I want each player to create their own unique story. Don't get caught up in trying to get a perfect ending. Have fun. What this really means is, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon is a game where you're supposed to make your own story. This ties in greatly with a mechanic I haven't really mentioned yet. Permadeath. Fire Emblem's defining mechanic. Overall, Shadow Dragon is definitely the best game when it comes to permadeath. The game is constantly throwing new units at you, and even if you somehow get them all killed, the game will just toss generics at you instead. Now compare this to something like Three Houses, where once you hit the time skip, you don't get a single new unit for the rest of the game. So if one of your guys dies, you're shit out of luck. This mechanic also ties into the intended story of Shadow Dragon where you're supposed to get invested in your units, and due to the inherently random nature of some of the mechanics, some will shine more than in another player's playthrough, and tragedy will eventually befall one of your units, making your story truly your own. Now, I know most players reset, but I think if you're a player that's never really engaged with the permadeath mechanic, I would seriously recommend giving it a shot in Shadow Dragon. The game supplies more than enough resources needed to succeed, and who knows, you might just have some fun and you might just have your own story to tell afterwards. Now, Shadow Dragon definitely isn't a perfect game, so let's discuss some of its flaws. I'll be discussing the lack of supports first since that's many people's biggest gripe, and it ties back into my previous point. Yes, it does deprive the characters of the depth they otherwise would have had in other entries, but I do think it ties into the ideal way to play the game. Now, I don't know if this was 100% the intent, but I like to sort of project traits onto the characters, like many people do with their Pokemon, for example. And this would obviously be harder if every aspect of the character's life was spelled out for the player. The game usually produces a good template for a personality, where the player can then build off of it. This of course means that you poured so much into a character, even while their character, it makes it even more tragic when they die. Which of course makes your story even more tragic. Also, I just think making personalities for these little Arcanine goobers is fun. Like, in an Iron Man two years ago, I claimed Thomas was a pro gamer, and funnily enough, that's kind of stuck with my channel for all these years. 
like, the dude's in my channel banner, and he's a popular meme in my community, to the point where he made the final blow in my most infamous Let's Play, and I don't think that'd be the case if I was just basing his character off of his Fire Emblem 12 supports. So yeah, the game lacks supports, but given the way the game is meant to be played, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And it fits in with the overall design philosophy. Another common complaint is the graphics. Sure, they're not the prettiest out there, but I don't really think they detract from the experience. They're just kind of okay. And the animations lack a bit of the flavor from the other games in the series, but again, this isn't really a big deal to me since I mostly play Fire Emblem games for the gameplay. Stylish animations are just extra for me. However, if you're one of the people who thinks Engage looks too anime, boy howdy do do I have the game for you. Then there's the balance of the game. I won't lie to you, it's not that great. On the hardest difficulty, the first three bosses are nightmare tier enemies that kill most of your units, making the difficulty very front-loaded. The game also gives you three warp staves with seven uses each, meaning that if you choose to, you can just skip pretty much the whole game. Most people I've seen play the game casually don't do this since they actually want to experience the game, but it's definitely something that should have been altered. Then of course there's the strangest decision of the game. Locking levels and characters behind having a certain amount of your own characters be dead. I'm going to be frank with you, I've hardly played any of these chapters since I'm rather good at the game, so technically I haven't experienced all of the content in this game I've been praising for the last 10-ish minutes. This is a baffling decision, but from my experience they're not really needed to enjoy the game since I've been enjoying the game for years without them, so t take that as you will. So in the end, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon is a game with excellent UX and UI, simple yet engaging mechanics that make for an extremely replayable game. And while the base story is rather simple, each player by the end should have their own engaging meta story if played as intended. Yet for some reason the most mentioned things about this game are its flaws. Like, I get that longtime fans can be upset about the lack of supports and less stylized graphics, but if you would, remove it from the context of Fire Emblem for a second and just look at it as a game so you can examine it from an outside perspective and see all the good it brings to the table. This game is a remake of a, let's be honest here, less than good NES game, with some of the worst UX and UI you've ever seen that completely turns that around and has some of the best UX and UI in its series, and on its own is an incredibly replayable game with fun mechanics. That sounds pretty damn good, right? Is Shadow Dragon the best game? No. Is Shadow Dragon the best Fire Emblem game? Of course not, it doesn't have parry, but I do think it's pretty great, and I think if other people analyzed its feats more closely, they would too. With all that being said, this has been 5 points, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. It really helps the channel. But most importantly, remember to have a wonderful day. Bye bye